Okay, now we're going to look at annuities as installment loans. So, so loans that you take out from the bank are annuities from the bank's point of view, and the formula is the exact same formula that we were using for the annuity cases. The amount borrowed is the original, and it's negative, it's debt, right? It's the principal amount of the loan. It's the amount that you're taking, borrowing from the bank. The payments that you make back to the bank when you're paying off your debt are positive, right? Because you're paying off your debt, and so those values are positive. You're borrowing negative, right? So what you're borrowing is negative, what you're paying back is positive. Minimum payments are what we're looking at. We're assuming you only make your minimum payment, nothing more. Right? And once you pay it off, you make every single payment, and you've paid your debt off, and so the future value should be zero. Right? That's what makes it the annuity case. You start with a large amount of money, you're slowly paying it off. While you're paying it off, your debt is incurring interest, right? the same way that the annuity type would. All right, so we fill it out the same way. Find the monthly payment of a car loan. If you borrow $8,000 at 8% 8 interest, compounded monthly for four years, how much interest is paid on your loan. Right, so remember, the loan amount is the present value. So you plug it into the calculator exactly the same way did we did the annuity cases in the last set of videos. All right, future value zero, you'll pay your debt off. All right, so N is still compounding period times time, and most of the time with installment loans, it's almost always monthly. Not, not always, but I'd say 80% of the time it's monthly. All right, so monthly for four years, so four times 12, so 48 payments total. At an interest rate of 8%, you're borrowing, so again, it's negative, it's debt. You're making payments back, that's what we want to solve for, and your payment period is monthly, and your compounding period is monthly. Alright, so you solve for what your monthly payments will be, and so you solve for that, so it comes out the value $195 and about 30 cents, if I round to the, the penny, 30 cents and change. And so that's how much you'd have to pay back monthly for four years. 48 times you pay $195.30 to pay off your loan plus interest. Well, we want to figure out well, how much was that interest. Right? It's always good to know how much extra you paid for something. And so interest is always all your payments. Right? All your payments would be the N, total number of payments, times the payment value, minus how much you borrowed. Right? That's the loan amount. Well, in this particular problem, you're going to make 48 payments of $195.30. You borrowed $8,000, which again, how much you pay back will always be more than what you borrowed. It is. It's $9,374.40. And so that means you paid an extra $1,374.40 in interest. Right, that's how much extra you paid on your loan. You borrowed eight thousand. You paid it off slowly, with interest, and so this would be the extra interest on your loan. All right, next example. Mortgages work this way. Car payments, mortgages, your college loans work this way. They're installment payment periods. All right, suppose that you want to buy a house that is as a starter home. It's worth one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. You have a thirty-five thousand dollar down payment. That means you pay off that much of the house right away and you borrow the rest. All right. You can get a loan for 30 years at 5.2% interest compounded monthly. Find your monthly payments. How much do you actually end up paying for your house at the end of 30 years? Which hopefully properties increase in price and all of that stuff. You fix up the house a little bit and your house's value typically goes up as time goes on. So you're hoping that how much you end up paying for the house is the same as the or less than the value of the house in 30 years. Right, first thing, though, is you're not borrowing the full amount. Your loan, which is your present value, is the house value minus the down payment. Right, you're already paying off $35,000, which means you only need to borrow $140,000 for the rest of the, the value of the house. And so that's your present value. All right, so now plug it into the calculator. N is our compounding period times time. So for 12 months over 30 years, so every month for 30 years, which means 360 payments total. So you have 360 
you're never if you don't pay early or pay pay ahead, if you only ever make your minimum payment, you're gonna have to make that minimum payment 360 times. All right, 12 times for 30 years. Interest rate, which is 5.2 percent, which is about what the going rate is right now. Um, it is actually lower in some cases, all right, but it's usually somewhere around four to six. Present value is your loan. You're borrowing the $140,000 that's left after you make your down payment. We're looking for your mortgage payment, PMT. After 30 years is all said and done, you'll have paid your house off and it's yours. All right, so future value is zero. All right, those are both 12s, compound or pay period and compound period of 12. So again, you're going to look for your mortgage payment, which mortgage payments typically are fairly high. Uh, mortgage payments usually are anywhere from about $600 to can be as high as $5,000, depending on the, the size and the value of the house. And again, that would be your monthly payment and somewhere in between. This particular one is a fairly low mortgage. $768.76 and change is your mortgage payment, which like I said, this is on the low end. Uh, I think average mortgage payments are actually closer to $2,000. All right, so there's your monthly mortgage payment. Every month they have to pay $768.76 on their house to pay it off in 30 years. All right, so there's the first question, your monthly payment. Second question, how much do you actually pay for your house? All right, so we want to figure out your house, the total payments. And what's easy to forget about this one is you actually already made one big payment. All right, so your total payments would be your N times your payments plus the down payment. Don't forget you already did that one time down payment. All right, you've got all your little ones, the $700 ones, and then you've got your down payment, your one time payment on the house. All right, so 360 times you're going to make a payment of $768.76 plus that $35,000 you initially put down on the house. And so at the end of 30 years, when you multiply and add those all together, the house cost $311,000. A little less than twice what the original value of the house was you end up paying for it. and that's typical for a mortgage payment especially if it's a 30-year mortgage payment uh, if you do like a 15-year or 20-year you're, you're a little better in the interest but if you do a 30-year and you don't pay it off early uh, you end up paying almost double what the house was valued so you're hoping your property goes up property value goes up over those 30 years at the same rate as your loan or the same percent so again, that's a lot of interest. Where again, banks make a lot of their money this way. All right, we're going to do the same one, but suppose you have a second option. All right, so that was our, your first option. So you crunch the numbers. They could give you a 30-year loan at 5.2% interest. All right. They give you a second option. So you have the same house, the same down payment, but they give you a 15-year option. And usually when they get paid off faster, they will give you a lower percentage because they're assuming that you can make those payments. Uh, so they will typically give you a lower interest rate if you pay your house off faster, you pay your car off faster, or you pay your uh, student loans off faster. All right, so you have a 15-year loan at an interest rate of 4.8%. And we'll see what the difference is. So we want to see this. So find the new monthly payment and then the new value of the house. And actually asked one step question further. I asked for the interest in this case as well. All right, so remember, the present value is still 140000 right? You're, you're only borrowing the leftover amount. N, though, is now 12 times 15. You're making half the payments. Right? Instead of 360 payments, you're making 180. Your interest rate's a little lower, not a whole lot, but it is a little lower. Present value is still the negative 140000 Payments are what we're looking for. What's the new mortgage payment? Future value is zero, and those are still 12. Compounding period and pay 12, period are 12. All right, so what are the new pay? Now, the downside to paying it off faster, it means your monthly payment's bigger, right? So when I had the 30-year loan, I only had to pay about $700, a little over $700 um, when I paid it off. But when I'm paying it off twice as fast, the only way to pay it off twice as fast is to have a, a bigger mortgage payment. 
And so this is a little closer to what actual mortgage payments typically are the size of them. That comes out $1,092.58. So like I said, that's a typical mortgage payment. Usually it's in the thousands. All right, so every month for 15 years, you have to make a mortgage payment, a monthly mortgage payment of $1,092.58. All right, so now how much do you pay for your house? So you found your house total payments. And don't forget that original $35,000 was part of the payments. So you've got your N times your, your mortgage payment, number of mortgage payments times the value of them plus your down payment. All right, so 180 times, you're going to pay $1,092.58. You, one time payment of 35000 add all of those values together, and to $131.664.42, right, which is, again, about a hundred thousand dollar difference, about ninety thousand dollar difference, which ninety thousand dollars, right? Ninety thousand dollars is significant. That's ninety thousand dollars you didn't have to take out of your pocket. So, fifteen year, twenty year mortgage loans are always the better way to go because you pay it off faster. Now, the downside is you pay a little bit more a month, but the little bit more is actually not that significant. Three hundred dollars a month is not huge when you think about your saving. $90,000 total. That's a big chunk of change. All right. You still pay a bunch of interest, but this one, like I said, is a much better value on your house. Instead of doubling it, it only goes up by about $50,000. Right. We'll actually find out what the interest is. All right, total interest on the house would be how much you paid. Or not future value, total payments. Which is what we just found, minus the amount you borrowed. All right, so, which you, you leave off the 35000 That one didn't earn any interest, so you just do total payments, these. It's the 180 times the 1092.58, right? It's the amount of interest on the loan, all right? So make sure that's clear. Total payments on the loan, right? That's where you're getting interest. So you only do the loan part, right? You don't worry about the down payment in this case. All right, so those are all your payments on the loan. That's the amount you borrowed. So the amount you paid extra on your house, $56,664.40, which actually is fairly small uh, for the interest on a mortgage, all right, because again, you're paying it off faster. All right? Most people take out a 30-year loan, but it really is to your benefit to pay a little more a month and take out the lower loan. All right, next example, which is probably going to be what you guys will be doing more of besides having your college loans um, in your future, right, your, your probably first big loan that you'll borrow from the bank will be a car loan. All right, so this will be an example of figuring out, well, how much can I afford? What, what's the price of the car that I can figure out? So what you do is based on, you know, how much money you earn monthly, you figure out your budget. So Olivia has looked at her budget, how much she earns, and what all of the other expenses are, and how much disposable income she has. And she's figured that she can afford to make a 275 monthly payment on a car loan. All right, that's as much as she can make. Her, her budget allows her that much wiggle room every month. And again, it's every month. So she plans that most car loans are typically five years. All right, some people try to pay them off in three, but usually you take out a five-year loan. All right, she pays off the car in five years. The bank is willing to give her, so again, usually you call into banks, or when you go to buy a car, they'll give you a list of banks. And so her bank is willing to give her a 5.2 interest rate compounded monthly. What's the maximum amount she can borrow to purchase a car based on her budget? How expensive of a car can she afford? And how much of that amount borrowed will end up being interest once it's all said and done? Okay, so we know the payments. We want to figure out the present value, right? How much can she borrow? So we plug it in. N is compounding period 12 times 5. So she's going to make 60 payments. Our interest rate is 5.2, which again is about the going rate right now. It's somewhere between, if you got a really good um, uh, score for your, your debt score, 
if it's somewhere close to 800 credit score, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, you can actually get a loan for about 3% right now if you have a close to an 800 score, but about 5 is typical for people usually in the 700 range, which is what most people are in when they look at your credit scores. All right, present value is what we're looking for. How much can she borrow? That's what we want to solve for. Her payments that she can make back to the bank is a positive, right? She's paying it off, so it's a positive 275. She's going to pay it off, so the future value is zero, and those are still 12s. And again, typically for installments, they're almost always monthly installments. All right, how much can she borrow? So what size of car, what's the value, maximum value of her car that she can get? All right, so we want to figure that out. When you figure that out, it comes slightly more than 14,000, so 14,501.93. And that's how much she can borrow. Right. That doesn't necessarily mean that's the, it's, it depends on if she's got a down payment, maybe she, she can get a car that's a little more expensive if she's got a down payment that she can do first. You also have to keep in mind when you're buying a car, there's lot fees and there's taxes, right? If you buy a $10,000 car and it's got a 10% tax, well, you've got to tack on another $1,000 onto that amount. If you buy a $20,000 car, you got to tack on another $2,000 onto the, the amount. Um, and those again are, and typically there's a lot fees too, and you gotta take those into consideration. Usually down payments pay for your, your uh, lot fees and taxes. All right, so there's the amount her loan is. And so that's how much she borrowed. That's not how much she ended up paying for her car. We wanna figure out, well, how much did she end up paying? So this is the biggest value of her loan, so she could find a $14,000 car, as long as she you know pays the taxes and the lot fees. We want to figure out, well, how much interest did she end up paying on her loan? Well, that would be how many payments she made. So N times her payments minus the amount she borrowed. And so 60 payments of $275 minus that $14,500. So assume she, she borrowed the whole entire amount. So she'll end up paying $16,500. That's how much she pays back even though she only borrowed $14,000. Just the way loans work. And so that she has interest of around 2000 So she has to pay back the bank a little bit more, a little bit less than $2,000 total at the end of her five years. And like I said, that's about a typical loan payment for a car. All right, so that finishes up the annuity types. All right, so that's the loan cases, which are very similar to the other cases. You plug them in the same way. The last thing that we're going to talk about in this section is there are applications where you could use two money types, two formula types. And we're going to talk about those. And again, we're going to be using the TVM solver. If we weren't using the TVM solver, though, we would have to use two formulas and combine them. All right? And sometimes it does require us to fill out the TVM solver twice. We use a piece of information from the first part and the second part. And that's in the next video.